Hi friends, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to see the story Sindbad the Sailor published in the Chandama magazine. So this is the fourth voyage of the story. So let's move towards the story. I was very happy for several months. My wife was such an amenable companion to me that I planned to take her with me to Baghdad when I got the chance to leave this country secretly. It is quite true that the man proposes but God disposes. Soon I was to learn that all my plans were nothing but dreams. One day one of my neighbors lost his wife. I went to condole him and said, Grieve not brother, all grief is futile. After a time will you will not feel this sorrow and may Allah grant it. The lady you, you will marry next may turn out to be even a better companion. He appeared to be greatly surprised at my words. What are you talking about? He said. Don't you know that you are talking to one who is to die in a short time? It was now my turn to be surprised. Why do you say that? I asked him. By the mercy of Allah, you enjoy good health. I hope you are not contemplating suicide. Ah, I can see that you don't know the customs of our country. He said. We bury a man or a woman when his wife or her husband dies. No one is exempted. Not even the king. What a horrible custom! I exclaimed. I would never submit myself to such a custom under any circumstances. While we were talking, his relations came to express their sorrow for death of his wife and his own impending death. Then he followed preparations for the funeral. The dead lady was decked out with all the ornaments she had. Then she was borne to the burial ground in a coffin. Her husband walking behind the hearse. His friends and relations walked behind him. Presently, we reached a hill by the shore. On the hill, there was a deep well. A large stone slab covered its mouth. Now, this slab was pulled aside and the coffin was lowered into it. Then, my friend was made to follow the coffin with the help of a rope. To this rope was tied with a jug of water and even loaves of bread. My friend did not put up the least struggle when they lowered him into the well of death. The slab was pushed into place over the bell and we came back home. I thought that I had never seen anything more cruel in my whole life. As soon as I went to the palace, I saw the king and said to him, Master, I have been to many countries, but never to one where a living husband is buried along with his dead wife. Kindly let me know if this is ghastly custom applies to foreigners. It does, the king replied. Any foreigner who is living here shall be buried alive if his wife happens to die. My stomach turned when I heard these words. My heart began to throb with the thought that my wife might have died in my absence and I rushed home. To my relief, my wife was in full health and I said to myself, don't worry Sindbad, your wife will continue or I will outlook you and you will not be buried alive. But this hope proved to be an utterly false because after only a short time, my wife fell ill. She was bedridden for a few days and then left for the world to join Allah. My sorrow and fright knew no bounds. Did I escape being eaten by the cannibals only to be buried alive? If I had any lingering hopes of getting exempted from the custom, was it was completely wiped out when the king came to me and condoled me with my coming end. He promised that he would be present with all his courtiers when I was to be lowered into the well of death. My wife was decorated with all her costly ornaments. As I walked behind her ears, the king graciously walked by me. Soon we reached the hill by the sea. The slab that covered the well was pushed aside. The dead body of my wife was lowered into the deep well. Then I told the king, It is very unfair that you should force me to observe a custom of your country. I have a wife and children in my own country waiting for my return. But none heeded me. The rope was passed under my arms. They tied a jug of water and seven loaves of bread on the same rope. Then I was lowered into the pit. We will pull up the rope when you untie yourself. They told me as I descended. But having reached the bottom, I jerked, indicating that I wanted to be pulled up again. 
Disgusted with my behavior, they dropped the rope after me, closed the well and went away. The interior of the well where I found myself looked like an extension, an extensive cave. I smelt the stink of decaying bodies. There was some illumination from above, so the place was not entirely dark. I fell on the ground and shed tears for a long time. This is a fit punishment for me. Why could I not be happy at home? I bailed. I could have died when the ship was wrecked in the mid ocean. I could have died in the valley of diamonds. I could have become food for the cannibals. Why did I marry in this godforsaken country and face such beastly death? Soon hunger and thirst began to torment me. I decided to keep myself alive as long as possible. So I began to consume my food and water in meager quantities. I cleaned a place for myself to lie down at night. Gradually, my supply of food and water ran out and I was faced with the prospect of dying of thirst and hunger. While I was sleeping, prepared to die, I was disturbed by, from, my queer, from my sleep by a queer sound. Straining my ears, I could make out the noise of respiration. Then I heard the noise of some creature scurrying off. I boldly pursued this creature. I ran up and down on the uneven ground, stumbled and fell, got up and resumed my pursuit until I could see the light of a single star in front of me. I was greatly surprised, but as I proceeded further, I found that the opening led to a narrow passage. Probably it was the work of a fox or a wolf which made use of it in order to eat the dead. I crawled through this passage and emerged into the open. The sky above was blazing with stars. I fell on my knees and offered a prayer to, of gratitude to Allah. Here I was safe. The people in the city did not come this side of the hill. I went back to the cave of dead, looted the ornaments on the dead bodies, made a bundle of them and then came out again and hid the bundle at the foot of the hill near the shore. I made several trips to the cave and collected immense quantities of gold, silver and precious stones. Eating whatever I could hold off, I lived in that deserted place for many days before I saw a ship. At the sight of the first ship on the horizon, I took off my turban, unfurled it and ran to and fro the beach while the clothes fluttered in the wing. Luckily for me, I was noticed by the people in the ship. The ship made for the shore and I was taken aboard with all my bundles. The captain of the ship approached me and said, My friend, I have been sailing ships in these waters all my life but I've never once seen a soul on this coast. How did you happen to be here? Sir, I told him. Many of us merchants were sailing in a big ship when a terrible cyclone wrecked the ship and left us to the mercy of the sea. I was only one who escaped alive on a large plank which saved not only me but also my cargo. Finally, I drifted here. To please the captain, I offered him one of the richest ornaments that I took from the cave of death. But the captain refused it, saying, No, I can accept money from a passenger, but not from one who I have rescued from a shipwreck. Several times I have prepared or provided out of my town funds food, dress and fare for those whom I have rescued. Men should behave like human beings towards other men. The captain's human outlook pleased me. We had a happy voyage. I spent most of my time recollecting my experiences. All the hardships which I had gone through now and appeared to belong to a dream. But when I thought of the time I spent in the cave of death, my blood would turn cold. In the course of time, we touched Basra. After spending a few days there, I went up to the river and arrived in Baghdad. My people were extremely happy to see me in the precious cargo I brought home. So this was the story, Sindhabad the Sailor, the fourth voyage published in the Chandamama magazine. Till I come back with a new video, new story and a new episode. Till then, stay safe, take care. This is your Chandamama, signing off.